Why do audiophiles hate loudness controls? This question comes from Sunny in Bombay, India. Sunny writes, I have two pretty basic amplifiers, a Marantz PM6006, as well as a Yamaha, we used to call it Yamaha, AS801. Both have loudness controls, and I must say, I prefer the sound with the loudness control on. It sounds fuller at lower volumes, and both amps sound teeny with the loudness turned off. I know audiophile purists hate the loudness function with passion. I well, wouldn't really like to know your thoughts on it. Also, just wanted to add that I'm a big fan of yours. I love your Q&A sessions on YouTube and wait for new uploads eagerly every single day. Ah, that's very nice. I appreciate that, Sonny. And I look forward to making them for you every single day. Though I do them all <laughs> on one day. Today is Saturday and it's a lovely day outside. Terry's home gardening and I not a big gardening fan, so, but I do like being outdoors, and a good hike would have been nice. Uh, but here I am, enjoying time with you. So, loudness controls. And who'd have thought? Audiophiles hating something? <laughs> yeah, go figure. Oh, boy. We are a passionate lot, are we not? I mean to tell you, we, we get all riled up about about a lot of stuff. So let's talk first what a loudness control is. And there are many different types, but basically they should all have the same functionality. A loudness control controls what we would think of as the Fletcher Munson curve. It doesn't control the curve. It's in response to that curve. And that, that curve says that when volume levels go down, the ear perceives less bass and less top end. And these guys, Fletcher and Munson, did a big study years ago and they, they kind of determined. Now, there isn't less bass and there isn't less top end, but the ear perceives it. And so as you turn the level up, all of a sudden, now we perceive flatness. As the level goes down, it kind of goes away and lops off on the ends. So loudness controls basically are bass and treble boosts that are, if it's designed properly, that are tied to the volume control. So just at the point where we start to fall off, a little bit of boost happens on both the treble and the bass. And the lower we turn it, the more boost that goes up, and you wind up having a flat uh, curve sounding. Okay. And uh, look, when I started out in this thing, I had a Kenwood receiver that I adored, and I always had the loudness control cranked up on that because it, it, it definitely sounded better. Now, my loudness control wasn't great because it was, this old Kenwood amp, it wasn't variable with the control. Turn the loudness on, it boosted the bass and the treble up. Always. <laughs> and I just liked more bass and treble. And I had crap speakers, right? I mean, my speakers, they, they were all right. Uh, they were called phased arrays, and, and they were, eh, you know. Uh, and it, it helped that speaker sound its best. Audiophiles, in general, don't like mucking around with the sound because we're purists. Right? We, we like purity in sound. We would much sooner have you play the sound, the music, at a proper level. If you play it at a proper level, you don't need a loudness control, right? But I think most of us are also realists. If your system sounds better with that loudness control on, do it. This is all about music. It, this, is, this is not heart surgery. This is it's supposed to be fun and enjoyable. And whether you're making up for deficiencies in your speakers or in the level that you listen to, or you just like some bass and treble, uh, by all means, use a loudness control. Actually, I mean, if, if it wasn't so intrusive, and by that, I mean, as a purist, when we design a circuit, we want to have the cleanest, purest path 
for the audio signal to go through. And if we start adding extra stages with bass and treble controls, uh, even if they're variable or not, you're, you're adding more circuitry, you're changing phase angles that don't want to be changed. It, it, it mucks up the, the temporal uh, aspects of music and you're getting something in return, but it's also, you're losing something. So I would always kind of stay away from that. Having said that, their functionality makes perfect sense. And were I to build a pure digital product, let's say, let's say we had a pure digital preamplifier and there wasn't any analog until the very end of it, right? And it was A to D in and all of that. Well, hell yeah, I would put a loudness control on that. And because it's using DSP in the digital domain, we wouldn't have to worry about phase shift. There would be no extra circuitry and it could be tuned perfectly and it would be a beautiful control and I would love it. Other audio files? I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> Anyway, hope that answers your question, Sonny. And hey, Sonny, have you got yourself a copy of this book? I would really appreciate it if you did. I think you'd really enjoy it. Uh, you won't get the answers to your questions like that in here. This is all, you know, 99% true is, is my story. Uh, it's how I got here. And it's not one of these fluffy, oh my God, it's a memoir, I hate memoir. This is a novel. I mean, this, this has wild adventures of getting, you know, pulled over by the German police, of getting busted for this and for that, and all the shenanigans that I went through in my, in my youth, and I survived. I'd really appreciate it if you'd buy it. Go to Amazon, type in 99% true. Thank you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.